Okay, let's get right into it. Naming a triangle, first step, naming a triangle. Well, first thing you could do is name a triangle based on what you know about its sides, all right? It's sides only. So if I looked at a triangle and saw that all three sides are the same length, any idea what I call that? Just go ahead, let's go. Equilateral, done, nice job. This, a lot of this will be reviewed today. All right, what if only two of the sides and the third side is not? That's called isosceles. Easy to say, a little harder to spell. Isosceles. Or if you look at a triangle and none of the sides are the same length. Scalene triangle, scalene. That is the three ways you can name a triangle based on the length of its sides, all right? All right, let's say I know nothing about the sides, but I know some info about the angle measures. What if all three angles are equal? Now, could you call it equilateral? Yeah, you could. All right, but there is another term if all three angles are equal. And let this one roll off your tongue. Equiangular. 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 And let's just go and dig a little deeper here. If all three are equal and they add up to 180, what's each angle measure? Should be 60, 60, 60. Yep. Okay, on your diagram, you guys have a 105 degree angle here. So if one angle is bigger than 90, obtuse triangle. Is it possible in a triangle to have two angles bigger than 90? Why not? In a triangle, the angles have to add to 180. So if you had two that are bigger than 90, it'd go over 180, which is impossible. Questions here? Okay, uh, you guys, let's just do this one real quick with the right angle, right triangle. And then what do you guys have? You have 30 and 70, right? All three angles below 90. That would be an acute triangle, yep. Acute, okay. No big deal. All right, what I'm gonna try, try to do my best here is to incorporate some vocabulary terms that we've used already in units one, two, and three into some of these triangles. First start with this diagram. M is the midpoint of JL. M is the midpoint of JL. Tell me something back, please. What do you know if M is the midpoint of JL? Hopefully we're at this point in the year. Uh, I don't want to just go to 100 and play this game the whole time. So Here we go. Four. If I know M is the midpoint, what do I know? What's that? Okay, so name two segments that are equal. Uh, K, J, M, and J, L, D. Those are angles. Oh. Um, M is the midpoint of J, L. So J, L. J, M, and M, L. There we go. J, M, and M, L are both congruent. Which means what about all three segments if these two were congruent to begin with? They're all congruent to each other by substitution. Perfect. All right, uh, they're asking me what type of triangle KJM is. So I need to figure out what type of triangle that is based off its sides. Well, it's already isosceles, everyone agree? Could be a little more though. So I gotta do some investigating on the other sides. Uh, Nate, find the length of JM for me. If that was 1.5, cuts it in half, JM's gonna be, here you go, let's hear from 13. What, point? Seven five. And that must mean this side is also point seven five because they were congruent. Look at all three sides. Name that type of triangle right now. Nine, what type of triangle am I working with? Equilateral. How'd you know that? Okay, all three sides are what? Yep. So triangle JKM is equilateral.
because all three sides are congruent. Done. Any issues? Next one. Find the measure of all three sides of this isosceles triangle. Find the measure of all three sides. I'm trying to mess with your mind here. I'm trying to mess with your mind. You got to find the value of x. Uh, quick question. Do all three of these sides have to be 180? Let me say it again. Do all three sides add up to be 180? What adds up to 180? Angles, angles, not the darn sides. Can you set up an equation to find x, though? OK, hold, oh, let's see here if I messed with your mind or not. 12, got an equation I could set up to find x. Yep. I Did I need the 9x minus 1 in the equation? Nope, I did not. I will need it when I find the length of it, but not to find x. All right, so I take the two congruent sides, set them equal, move over the x's and the ones or the point fives, and in a second, let me know what you get. Uh, when you're ready, what are you guys finding as the value of x? 8, what do you find the value of x as? 1.5, nice job. Now it does say to find all three sides, so now i got to go back to AB, plug in 1.5, do the same thing for AC and CB. Evan, when you're ready, what'd you find the values of those sides? AB 12.5. AB 12 and a half. Got it. Okay, let me know when you're ready. Okay. Any questions there? We're doing a little algebra. All right, final one. What if I put a triangle on a graph? Tell me what type of triangle it is. So I'll give you a, go ahead, give you about a minute. Go ahead and graph that triangle for me. Make, please label the points D, E, and F. Don't leave it blank. All right, here we go. Find the length of each side, but I am not going to use a ruler or anything. Is there anything from unit one in particular that I provided you guys that will find the length of any line segments? 
because I can't count these either. Anybody remember anything from unit one that I could break out right now and find the length of any line segment? Dylan? Don't call it the length formula. Anybody remember the proper term for it? Distance formula. There we go. Yes, that will find the length of any line segment. Who had to pull that one out of you? I'm nervous to ask now if you remember what it was. What did it involve? Anything? A square root. Good start. A big square root, right? Anybody remember what was underneath it, Thomas? There were parentheses involved. Well, the plus was in between the parentheses. Oh, the minus. Yep, minus inside. And what am I subtracting? The x coordinates and the y coordinates. And I'm still missing one thing. I don't know if anybody knows what it is. I am squaring those parentheses. Correct. Nice job. Work as a group. We'll get it. There it is, distance formula. I'm going to do one of them with you. The other two are on your own in your group. Lucky number 12, pick which side you want to do as a class. D it is, everybody. Here we go, DE. So let's find the length of DE. So next person up, give me the X coordinates to plug in for D and E. 14, negative 5 and 2, got it. So negative 5 minus 2, got it. And then how about the Y coordinates for D and E? Uh, 8, what do you got for me? 1 minus 9. Order does not matter. <laughs> Okay, again, refresh our memories here. At when you're done squaring, what type of number should come out every single time? Positive number. You should be adding two positive numbers at the end. In this case, you should be adding 49 and 81. 64, sorry, negative 8. 64. And that comes out to be the square root of 113. Since we are in the upper half of the uh, geometry students here, I'm going to ask you, if possible, to break it down. If possible, to break it down. Can anybody, and let me know if you do, find a perfect square that goes into 113 evenly? So I'm looking, check 4, check 9, check 25, check 36. 64, 49. Let me know if you find a perfect square that goes into 113 evenly. Anybody find any? Still work checking? All right, can't find any, can you? That means I can't break it down anymore. Okay, that's the way we're keeping it. Don't give me a sloppy decimal from your calculator. Square root of 113. By yourself in your group right now, you're going to do the other two sides, EF and FD. And I will let you know, you will be able to break both of them down. You guys just pick the one that you couldn't break down. Okay, which is fine. If you need help breaking it down, call me over. I will certainly help you break it down at the end but you should be able to break down these next two distances. And then we'll get together as a group and say, hey, what type of triangle do I have? Okay, let's start, mm, let's start with DF, DF. DF ended up being, here you go, 20 DF. 
3 square root of 5. Yep, you guys should have had the square root of 45, which broke down to 3 radical 5. Nice job. And then finally, what do I left? EF. So EF, uh, number 26, EF, 2 radical 26, which is the square root of 104 broken down. All right, what do we notice about all three side lengths? They're all different, meaning this is a scalene triangle. So we'll just write a little statement at the bottom. Triangle DEF is scalene because all three sides are different lengths or all three sides are different. There we go. Be prepared to use distance formula in a couple minutes when you get to it on the homework. All right, call me over if you still need some help with the radicals or the distance formula. Get going on the homework. You could possibly get it all done right now. <laughs> 